breakfast. Bri- hold on. After breakfast, we are simply going to Montana Tech to their UMEC, which is the Underground Mine Education Center. Um, and then we are going to be benching for a while, hoping all the beach boards work out well. We are also going to, thanks for the lighting, Joe, thank you. Really helps. <laughs> Just turn the light in the room. That's my good side. And then, um, once we're done with benching, you're going to be, honors, going to be taking care of organizing all the medic stuff. Don't talk to Pam. Um, we'll look it up in We'll be testing our comm systems. Yeah, so all this will be going on simultaneously. For testing, much. testing, making sure everything too? works for competition. Pretty much making sure everything works for competition. And then 5 o'clock, we've got a meet and greet slash registration slash captain's meeting. With oh, me. the other teams uh, at Butte Burley, and that'll Ooh. be fun. And okay. then I will be going through the itinerary, la- itinerary later tonight. Okay, cool, so, cool. That's pretty much it. What? Team speech. Team two. Um, <clears throat> guys, there's a lot of schools here that clean mines. Let's try to show who's mine. <laughs> um, you know, I'm okay, hoping we can have, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna introduce ourselves. Say hi. I'm we, from mines. Yeah. All right. Um, let's try to hate that. <laughs> I mean, it gets on our nerves too when they go, yeah, I'm from mines. Nice. Just assert dominance by winning, okay? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, no smack talk, let's just do it to them. No smack talk. No, no smack talk, um, yeah. We don't want people to be assholes. Friendly banter. No smack talk, just smack it. I welcome it. If it's friendly banter, you know, that's never harmful, but you gotta make sure it's reciprocated. You know, don't don't go straight on going somehow. Uh, but let's, you know, try to have good sportsmanship. Um, we're hoping, we're most likely going to be seeing everybody here. Maybe not everybody, but a few people here again. Um, so, you know, let's, let's kind of keep that where we'll be going. So this is, a, this is the day before the underground competition. We are going through all our supplies and restocking them into two bags so that we know where everything is and we understand what we're doing when it comes to competition. Come take a look. Come, come, come look. So we're, we're compartmentalizing our, our stat packs based on uh, use and purpose. So in the top pouch, I'm putting all of the tools, um, gloves, triage, tags, and cleanup. So, uh, you know, it's like making sure that we've got everything we need for uh, um, our own protection and to access the wounds of other patients. Severe bleed on this side. We've got Israeli dressing, tourniquet, um, chest seals, and then lots of gauze for bleeding control and direct pressure. Um, I'm still packing that. On the other side over here, uh, splinting equipment. So we've got three SAM style splints and three finger splints. Um, and then in addition to that, we also have a stack of triangular bandages to immobilize limbs. Um, top pouch, this is gonna be our uh, burns, burns pouch. So I've got three burn dressings in there, I'm gonna add some more. And then inside here we've got a lot of ace wraps for immobilizing like sprains and strains, coband to secure, and then this is our eye injuries cup. So. That's everything for for those. Environmental pouch. Um, we're expecting every patient we have to be in shock. So we have a lot of You wanna say what that actually is? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, they're space blankets. These are just literally aluminum foil. You wrap the patient in them and it makes them warm. Uh, helps to treat for shock and uh, also, if they're just panicked, it might make them think that you're doing something for them. So, because you can't really treat panic other than by pretending that you're doing something. Because if they're uninjured and they're just like, eee! annoying for everybody. <laughs> yeah. If they're uninjured, eee! Eee! You should care so much you really care for the patient. Oh yeah, I care very much for my patients. I also got this sick drop leg pouch. So. I'll be wearing this for the underground competition. Um, additional triage tags, space blankets, and a tourniquet, easily accessible. There's more stuff inside. I've got a pen light, and then I'm not going to be using these. I have my own shears, but I'm getting accustomed to it today. Uh, in the underground problem, time is going to be our biggest enemy on the on the medical practice of things. 
we want to treat as quickly as possible, just stop the bleeding and get their airway open, um, or cover them if they're dead. So um, that's what this is for, is to just make it super fast and easy. Uh, Inhalation. breathing bag and see if it still drains and you should hear a little noise and that means it's working inhalation exhalation drain valve then a positive pressure leak test which is a really exciting do nothing for a full minute. A good tutorial for whoever does this next. Mm -hmm. um, positive pressure. Now I'm testing to make sure this makes a noise. This does, which is good. And idles at about 3.6. And then the constant dosage. So I need to put this cap back under. And then I'm going to turn the oxygen on all the way. Good noise. And then I want this to be in liters per minute setting. And you also wait a couple minutes here sometimes, but you usually want it to settle at about 1.9 or lower. 1.5 to 1.9. Sometimes in altitude, it'll stick a little bit higher. So, for example, at the Edgar Mine, usually 2 or 2.1 is still fine. Uh, and it's been doing all right so far, as far as dropping a little bit. You just gotta give it time. Well, we're also at 5,700 feet. So two would theoretically be fine. I'm just picky, so I wanna see if I can get it to 1.9. There she goes, beautiful. Okay, and then we test the minimum valve. So, drain out this airbag, and there's a little valve inside of it that you can't see here that we want to make sure lets out pressure if it gets too low. That's a good noise. This is at 1.7, which we like. Press the giant red button that's on the other side of this. Also a good noise. Uh, residual warning, low pressure. So that means I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to watch the Sentinel to see what number it starts peeping at. Ideally, 700 or more, but usually with our unit, since it passes so fast, it's okay if it's a little bit lower. So that started at 530, watch my bank account. We're going to release the pressure because you physically can't turn a Sentinel off if there's pressure in the system. And Turn it off, checking the battery when we do. Which it looks like it's still full. So that's good. Initial, ready for use. Which would be me plugging this into a or competing, but normally to bench it, you just close it up. And this unit passes. All set. All right, so it's the big day. Um, first day of competition. Here's a mess, but we'll make it work. Um, we got our cart all set up with the med gear. Um, ratchet straps attached. This is where our BG4 is gonna go. T 
team's getting ready. We've got all our helmets in a nice, neat line. Have they talked to you guys yet? Have they no. come out here? Okay. They, they sort of. They did their their group see. speech. They gave okay. them a speech and we just tagged them. Okay. Yeah. yeah so uh, that'll. So I think that's that's probably the morning speech. They'll take them out and they'll give them more of the specifics. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the meantime, we'll wait for first aid. But I did want to say that I think. Do we have captains? I think we have a pretty good chance at one That just like is still in the trailer, isn't it? You're checking for Drager's orb. You're checking for waiting on the ice to put the ice in there. Check that everything is connected correctly. Just look at look it over. If you have visually inspected and you're ready to go, close it up. We will all do the high pressure leak test together. taking a drift round once or twice a week in the back of the mine. The ventilation rays are downcast and air exhausts out of the portal through the main fan. For some reason we have trouble moving air without using the main fan. There is a rumor of another old borehole, but I haven't been in the mine yet so I don't know. GMs don't usually go underground so I'm pretty clueless. Uh, a little while ago the nipper and shifter came tearing out of the portal wearing their rescuers. Once they caught their breath, they told me that smoke was building in the mine from over where the other two were working near the rays. They hollered for less cookie and scoot Rosenbeg, but didn't get any answer, so they left. The two that made it out are being treated for burns of their mouths. We're getting worried. It's been about an hour. The smoke was so bad we shut off the fan. We know there is a fire. Please explore the mine, seal or extinguish the fire. Rescue my guys and ventilate the mine. You have 60 minutes to do all this. Are you guys ready? I got a little bit more information for you. Uh, the Wildman M-Shaw ID is 10 and 5 aught. Operated, operated by, you must be kidding me, mining company. The nearest town is Lawson, Montana. Average employment is about eight people. They have uh, two working shifts, 10 hours per day five days per week, starting at 0700 to 1500 and 1500 to 23. Main fan exhaust out the portal, axial vane is fixed but reversible. If you want to reverse it, it's going to take quite a bit of time. All authorities have been notified, state, federal, and local. Backup teams on site with two more 10 minutes out. You are the first team to enter the mine. Fan controls are locked and guarded if the fan is off. Power is on and guarded. Ventilation raised is guarded. Two miners are unaccounted for. We have one shop in this mine that is used for oxygen storage. We just moved it in and we hope the miners are in there. We have smoke coming out of the portal, carbon monoxide present, and your oxygen is low. Our explosives magazines are outside of the mine. And the last time your guys' map was updated was 1985. So pretty up to date. Yeah, I can hear you now. You guys have any questions for me? So this is the whole donning procedure. Um, anytime you put a BG4 on, we'll go over the same thing. Captain leads the donning procedure. You want to put the mask on and then check your straps every time. Um, one thing we were told was actually was to not wear bandanas um, because you stop the seal. That loud noise was the oxygen tank coming on on the PG-4s, and then the, then start beeping. Okay. 
I know where we're at. <laughs> So this is that there was loose roof on the ground, which means you can scale it. Um, so they they learned that in the competition, and then they scaled it, um, and then they started walking in. As you can see, you got the tagline, you got the con line, and then you got the med cart. So there's a lot to manage and handle around there. Man trying to keep up. Uh, med carts in the back with the medic and the coca. That was an intersection check, so we had gas man doing the intersection check for gases. Yes. And then the gas test was in a placard on the ground. So Matt Man had like in that placard right there. That's the gas test. So they entered smoke, so then they had to maintain traverse afterwards, and that's what they're doing right here. They're trying to figure out how to maintain traverse. They went into one of the problems we encountered. They went into this room, and right here they had explosive primers and explosive blaster caps. These are not supposed to be next to each other. One of them triggers the other one to explode. One of them is less explosive and then triggers that bigger one. The other one doesn't really explode unless the other one explodes first. Um, so they're not supposed to be kept that close to each other or else that's just stupid. So they were supposed to grab a box and move it over. They didn't know that. So what they had down here, they had seals and bratislav materials over here. Um, so that's how, the, how they kind of put it. They have a placard down and then they have a bunch of stuff and then you take the stuff and that's what you'll use later on because it's all simulated, but in real life you'll actually have a bunch of material there. Yeah, so they're passing the stuff back to the cart. They were told they could only carry one or two at a time. They usually have that in problems because in real life you can only carry one or two at a time. So they like to set those, those uh, limits. does something really good right here. Pay attention. Right there. What does she do? Yep. 
So for a map board, hit the BG4. So every time you hit the BG4, you have to check the pack to make sure that nothing came loose. Two brands in the map board. Okay. Uh, did not pick up second set of gratises. Do you have any materials or gratises? Yeah, so here, captain's waiting on co-cap and map to catch up because they had to move the med cart. So then they move forward. Checking back and right there, maintaining traverse because they're in smoke. That's why captain's on that side, co-captain's on this side. Here we had a door, so there was a door right here, but there was a patient inside, and you basically just have to yell out, feel free, do all the door stuff. Um, but there was actually someone in there talking oh, to you. Anyone in there? Hi, I'm Les. Hi, Les. How are, are you okay in there? Yeah, I'm doing fine, feeling well. Everything went haywire, and I came in here, closed the door, kicked off the oxygen cylinder. Have you guys seen Scoop? We have not yet. Five is twenty six forty. Five's okay.
Okay, so here they used one of the seals. They encountered a fire. They couldn't put out with fire extinguishers, so they had to use the seals to close it up. Um, so they're, they're, the way that they have to hook up the seal is with this rope. You basically tie it on one end, and then you have to tie it on another end. It's kind of just fire, fire needs fuel and oxygen to burn. So yeah. If you seal it off, there's no air Exactly. So they were asking uh, Bo whether it was a full seal or like a three-quarter seal regulator. And then Bo very confidently answered full seal, having no idea what it was. <laughs> but it was the right answer this case. When you answered that, I like turned around. I was like, <laughs> ask Toby and Jeffrey. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff was like, what kind of seal is it? And you said full seal, and I said, <laughs> oh my God. So the air was still. It was not moving. So putting a full seal there didn't disrupt anything. If the air was moving, you need to regulate it so you don't disrupt the air off or how it's moving. Usually, you put a regulator, then a full seal on the other side, and then you close it back up. I was like right back here, right in front of them, and I was like, oh, God damn it. And we also, we also put the seal in the wrong place. We started too close to fire, and it burned or whatever, and they're like, well, you reuse it somewhere else. Leaking over the top of whatever this is. Pass up the next ceiling. It's not as intense as it was. Another five anchor, please. Anchoring. Number one, assembly. Seal. So we can talk to Adrian about a
through the door. Hey, Bo. Yeah? Do you think we can find Anchor and come join you guys in this conversation? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll Anchor. Use the here to clear out the air for the door. Right, and then this is totally sealed so it shouldn't flow back there. Okay. Do we have enough material for that? Uh, we only need the Bravis flop here and then we have that material in there that we're just moving. Okay. 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 Oh, and then... I don't know if that's... Well... It should continue straight because there's nothing here. Right, that's what Yeah, so that would just be a stagnant pocket. Okay. Just don't go in there. Um, we're going to have to ask permission. Yeah, we have to ask permission from the mine manager who's at Perkovius. Yeah, right in front of you. So is that your plan? Yeah. Alright, oh. Okay. We have to go through a fresh air base or can we just ask you all directly? He needs to know about your plan. Okay. But you can ask me at the same time. Okay, is that plan acceptable? It is. You did mention something about a fan. What did, what did you want to do with that? Which way is the fan blowing in? Is it in or out? Out. I don't think it matters because it'll just draw air all the way through anyways, right? It doesn't matter which direction it's I'm going to tell Andrew while you guys do that, okay? It does because right now it's fixed okay, to suck out of the mine. If you wanted to reverse it, it would take two hours to do. We can do it. Oh, uh, because no wait, because it's sucking air, that means we actually have to close up all the pockets that we don't want to suck air from the open. Uh, what can you do to verify? Oh, you have tools. So that's what led to the, uh, we had to take the person on the beach floor because we had pockets of bad air still because we didn't put the seal in the, the perfect place for it. Which I still think was kind of bullshit. Yeah. And then, then we lost 30 points on that for uh, endangering the patient. I mean, but we put them, we put them yeah. on a BG4. That's garbage. So Wait, 30 points? Um, we lost 30, 30 points for that. Yeah. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in real life, there's a chef that that's a, at least to a dead end. Mm -hmm. If you don't seal off at the intersection, you could have bad air, even if you vent it. Yeah. Right. But the problem was that the fan wasn't a blowing fan. It was an exhaust fan, so it was pulling all the air in. And at any intersection, it'll pull air in from each side, no matter what. Yeah. So it should have it gotten cleared out. 
And even if they said like, um, if they were trying to say like, well, you still had bad air here, then by that logic, the the air would have come straight down the middle and wouldn't have touched those sides at all. It was. It wasn't. We, we get a lot. We get kind of mad at them with ventilation stuff because that's an engineer's job, and they don't understand it too well. Oof. Because they're just they're just operators. Like they they know the things that they have to do and they know what they're told to do, but when we actually understand the physics behind it and we try to explain it, they don't like it. What you did before you All right, so we explored the mine. Um, we found some ceiling cloth. I don't know, so just overview. No, just overview. What okay. were you supposed to do for us? You were supposed to either seal or extinguish any fires? We explored the mine. We sealed yep. off an uncontrollable fire got to it. prevent oxygen into it. Got it. We got, uh, and we got the one miner we found in there out, and we found a note from Scoot that yep. he made it out through the borehole. And he checked in about an hour ago, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so time. I'm so we went over. About two minutes. <sighs> I Good job, that. though. Good job.